well, don't forget God's three-step recovery program. Look at verse 22. Uh, he says, unless they repent, God wants us to repent. So if you want to avoid emptiness, restlessness, and boredom, remember this. God is not mocked. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever you sow, you're going to reap. It's called the consequence engine. Well, you say, where's the grace of God in all that? Let's talk about the grace of God. The grace of God, Titus 2 says, teaches us what I just taught you. It teaches us we must deny ungodliness and worldly lusts. Well, let's finish up the Thyatirans. Now to you I say in the rest of Thyatira, as many as not known the depths of Satan, you're not trafficking in all this sin. I'm going to give you all these promises. And then he says, if you're a Christian, you'll hear. Well, what is the Lord's plan? It's to overcome Satan's plan. Satan, it says in John 10, his program is kill, steal, and destroy. He wants to kill your spiritual life. He wants to destroy your joy. He wants to steal your fruitfulness and boldness. That's Satan's plan. How does he do it? By getting us to drift and go the wrong way and not respond to the Lord. What's God's amazing offer? Well, you see it right there. God has great plans for us. I'll give power over the nations. You'll rule with me. Uh, and, and I'll give you the morning star. That's God's plan. Hey, I still have, let me get to the last point. I have two minutes for this. Do you know what the byproduct is of living the life God wants us to live? We have incredible boldness. Not in ourselves. In the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives us incredible boldness. Uh, Bonnie and I just spoke at a conference in Chiang Mai. I've mentioned it before. It was uh, several hundred medical missionaries. Two of them were from Myanmar. You know what, Myanmar, Burma. This is their report. They stood up there as they gave their report at this conference we were at. Bonnie and I were the spiritual mental health care providers. We discipled them, and I did the main sessions. I actually taught them what I'm teaching you. Uh, they all felt like they were in the BI. Um, but this couple, just 10 years older than you, most of you are in your 20s. They were just early, or most of you are in your late teens or early 20s. These were just like 31, 32. They had invested their lives in Myanmar. They had both gotten their medical training. She was a physician's assistant. He was an MD. They were serving in Myanmar, and they said, we went there because we wanted to go to the darkest spot on earth. I said, what is it? They said, 90% of all men in Myanmar over the age of 18 are addicted to opium. It's like the whole country, that's where they have all the heroin that's being sold here. They grow it there, you know, kind of there in Afghanistan and a few other places. They have had a civil war longer than any other spot on earth. They are still at war in a war that started in World War II at the end, and they're still fighting it over there, a civil war between the two factions over 60 years. They have more demon shrines in that country than any other place on earth. There are more Buddhist temples on top of the hilltops concentrated than any other spot in the world. So they have the demons, they have the killing and warfare, and they have the opium addiction. And she stood up there. The, the, the one that gave the report was the lady. And she said, when I was in school, you know, I went to the Mayo. I had all the degree. I went into medical profession. I was going to make a ton of money. And I realized that God wanted me to instead use my medical ability, look at this, to go to the darkest spot. And so I started examining, where do they most need Christ? And I thought, what would drive someone to do that? One thing, following Christ so much, you have boldness and the power of God. So my question to you is, some people are going to go to heaven empty-handed. Now you know how not to do that.